各位观众朋友们，大家好，欢迎收看我们 J 与 J 论坛，我是 Jimmy 马马健，我们欢迎我们的好朋友、好搭档 Jim the Way。Jim， well now it's official. Happy New Year. Happy New Year. Yeah, that's right. This is our first recording of the year. You're right. We we recorded on New Year's Eve. Yeah. I throughout the last few months, we've been talking about this for so long. But what happened yesterday was truly a shame.、Mm -hmm. It was. It was.、Uh, I, I. Everyone that that is complicit in this needs to be held responsible. To me, it's one of the darkest days in our history. It is a blatant disrespect of our the foundation of our democracy, of law and order.、Um, I wanted you to, to to tell me what what you felt yesterday when you watched. As I'm watching it, it was unreal. I couldn't believe this is happening. And then to hear the responses from my so-called conservative Trump supporters to tell me that、mm -hmm. this is not real, that this is Antifa,、mm -hmm. while blatantly believing in this cult, this、mm -hmm. absurd reality they live in, this、mm -hmm. obviousness. Tell me, what were you, what were you doing yesterday? I mean, did you see it live? I, I was watching it live. Actually, I did. I happened to be in a telephone. Repair、um, store, getting my phone repaired, and they had CNN on the television. So while I waited for a half hour, forty-five minutes, I had planned to make telephone calls and do some homework. But I was transfixed by what I saw on the television, and I had several、uh, several big thoughts. The overwhelming、uh, is it took a while for it to sink into me. That this was actually going on, and I had to come to grips with what I was actually seeing.、Um, that was that was my first response. My second response was I couldn't believe that President Trump would have not only advocated for this, but have led it, probably assisted in the planning of it, and then encouraged the people. Uh, to march down Pennsylvania Avenue and storm the Capitol. The third thing I had、uh, is、uh, my reaction is this is complete. The behavior of that mob is completely hypocritical from everything else that Trump and I and most conservative people, and I believe everything that Mr. Trump has stood for politically. Completely hypocritical to what he'd advocated before. It was not law and order. It was the reverse of law and order. It was mob behavior that was every bit as bad as what most of us had criticized throughout the summer of the violent cities.、Um, it it was occupying a public building and showing total disrespect for the rule of law. For、uh, the people's palace, which is what the capital is,、um, and then to see those people break into offices, to sit in Nancy Pelosi's chair,、um, and and then to bring guns into a forum like that,、uh, knowing that the capital is an armament-free place,、uh, it was completely, completely hypocritical. And so、uh, many people today. I'm jumping ahead now, Jimmy. Those were those were、um, absolutely my reactions、uh, initially. But many people today are criticizing the Capitol Police and wondering what went wrong and all of that. And while that's all valid, it is absolutely valid. They they never should have let their guard down. They were ill prepared for it. They knew it was coming.、Um, uh, I think that's absolutely beside the point. I, I, I want to have a conversation with you about this, Jim. I, I don't mean to cut you off,、yeah. but I, I would not remember if I respond. So, the Capitol Police,、yeah. they did not. They knew this was coming. Did we really all knew? I knew. I know Trump is this this、okay. selfish, ignorant, hypocrisy filled. But did we really know? Did we really think that Republicans, so-called Republicans,、mm -hmm. Cruz, Giuliani,、mm -hmm. Trump? Would actually incite a crowd, verbatim, to use violence to show strength. Did we? And if we did, 
How do we prevent it? He didn't want Pence to call the National Guard. So for now to say there's valid reasons, this is no. squarely on Trump, and that is it. No, and it's not a valid. It's, it's not a valid reason. But one of the things you learn about things like this in government is you never take anything for granted. You build in redundant protections. You do all those things. The Capitol Hill Police, the National Marshal Service, uh, Department of Homeland Security, all those agencies, including the D.C. Metropolitan Police. I was I, I've been in Washington two times in my career. Thankfully, I've never been through anything like that. But I do know the security precautions they take. They have routine protections that they can um, they they can invoke. Uh, and secondly, nobody knew that it was going to be the magnitude that it was yesterday. Nobody realized or expected Trump to advocate this. But people knew that President Trump was advocating a march on Washington. We knew that many, many Trump supporters were being organized to come to Washington. Nobody knew that they would break ranks, um, degenerate into illegal mob behavior. They, they didn't break ranks. This is what Trump and his people wanted the whole time. He called for it. Nobody no. promised. They followed their cult leader's orders. No. And even if we prepared to, to put this on Capitol Police, on the security protocol, this is classic whitewashing, classic conspiracy theories again. This has nothing to do with anybody else, but Trump is the complicit Republican elected officials. Okay. And that's that. Now, right. you, don't, you don't have to agree. I've heard what you're saying. I hear it. I hear it. I, I just want to know if you're angry, and our moderate friends are angry. Why is he still in office? He should have been gone long ago. He has the nuclear codes. This is an insurrection. This is a traitorous action that people have to be held accountable for. People have to go to jail for this. This is unprecedented mm -hmm. in our mm -hmm. history. What, mm -hmm. what, what touched me the most was what former President George Bush Jr. is mm -hmm. public announcement yesterday. I'm sure you saw it. And all the other true conservative leaders, including Mitt Romney, too many, and all the all his cabinet that has resigned, and all the Republican leaders are finally calling for, for him to go. Finally, after four years of this and elected this, it never should have got to this point. This was we're the butt of the jokes. I mean, the world is laughing at this. The world is shocked. We've lost, you've said this many times, we've lost our credibility in the world. Mm -hmm. This reinforced mm -hmm. the argument for people like Putin or for CCP, for, for, for Venezuela to say, look, it doesn't work. And, and this takes away the chance for people to have democracy, to have freedom. What he's done, what Trump has done is not just hurt us, but hurt everybody on this planet. That's what we don't see. That the long term effects. We, we how do we get back? Go back from this, Jim? Did you tell me how, how do we go back from this? What excuses do we give now? Well, I th I think part of the answer is what happened last night after this. The Congress resumed functions only a few hours later. The place was totally cleared. Um, in terms of the lawlessness and the violence on site, it was over within a matter of a few hours. Yes, it was a shame that one person was shot. I understand there are four more deaths. I don't know the details of them yet. Terrible, terrible situation. Never, ever should have happened. But um, I, think, I think the system recovered relatively quickly. Uh, that doesn't, that doesn't uh, in any way address the harm that Mr. Trump and some of the other people um, created by this, and it will take a while, if ever, for some of these wounds and bruises to heal. Um, I, 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 don't, I don't know but whether they ever will, but the biggest failing that I think Mr. Trump has done, nobody's talking about this. This is only my own observation. Um, I've not seen it on any of the news in the last 24 hours. The biggest failing that he has is he undercut his supporters and 
and many of the things that he has stood for. Um, what I mentioned, the behavior of his followers is absolutely hypocritical to everything else that they have stood on. Many of his supporters last night were trying to um, move forward with some of the uh, challenge on the election. By the time they actually had the hearings late at night after the recovery that I mentioned, more than half of them had felt betrayed and changed their vote. Um, uh, it, the, the cabinet secretaries like Elaine Chow resigned. She said last night that she was going to resign for Singh this morning. She did resign. Um, some of the people like William Barr probably had even a greater sense of things coming. Um, he resigned two weeks ago. Um, many of us said, why you have four weeks until it's over. Why not just wait till the end? He had his own reasons. And I think some of the people don't want to be in the room when the 25th Amendment uh, calling on Vice President Pence and the cabinet um, to uh, have to make a decision. Well, to Pence, so, let, me, let me explain to our audience very quickly. Jim, okay. your yeah. point is so we, unique that it's we, very rare for uh -huh. a, a traditional conservative, for Trump, for someone that voted for Trump, to, uh -huh. come to, to come to terms and to be able to talk about it publicly, because most people will never admit mistakes. Uh -huh. They'll never admit yeah. their political views. So, and also what you said is for our Asian audience, I want to tell them what Amendment 25th means. Okay. okay. Yeah. It, it'll, take, it'll take you a while to translate that. Yes. I, I probably can't do all of it, but it is so good. We'll probably hopefully put put caption on it. President Kennedy, uh, after he was if we get him out of office, it's too late. 两个礼拜没有时间了。所以用这个方式让他出来。为什么？因为川普手上有的这个核子武器的这个， he has a nuclear codes, and he is. We now see that he's unhinged, which I've said that for a long time. And and what Jim Duncan said this thing when he says his followers, um, you know, irrational and did these things, they did not. They're not acting rational. They're not doing things. These things on their own. These followers followed exactly what Trump said to show strength, to use force, to use violence. They follow exactly what Giuliani said. For me to blame the followers uh, by looking at it, I know. I, of course, it's going to sound so bad, but but look at them. They're the, they're the most, how do I say this? The most left behind is core voters, the uneducated, blue collar, low income. Mostly, we can tell from pictures, Caucasian. They're his core <laughs> followers. Do you, have, do you blame them? You can't. Because these people do have needs that are not met. Mm -hmm. They just follow the wrong person. They believe the wrong person. That's all. Trump has no ideology. When you said earlier that this a goes against his beliefs, and what, no, he is just a talking puppet. He only cares about himself. He knows <laughs> he committed crimes, multiple crimes. And why do we allow it to get here? This is my point. I am angry because how as a society have we failed? How the Republican leaders have failed us. Conservative media has failed us. All of us, because this is not just about politics anymore. This hurts all of us as Americans. It hurts the entire world. And for us to sit here to still assign blame on the followers or on the security, on all this, to me, this is malarkey. It is done. This is it. He needs to go. He needs to be held accountable. Giuliani, Cruz, every single one of these traitors, these are traitors. This is an insurrection. That's it. There, there should not be argument. For me to hear from right-wing media, from my personal friends, oh, security, it, they're in on it. Oh, it's Antifa. Oh, no, no, no. Trump didn't do this. He told them to go home. Did you hear what he said when he said that? He did He, he well, did uh, go home, but he had signed well, he that, but that, was, that was after the fact. That was after uh, Yeah, he already did it. It's like you already told your followers to murder someone. After you killed him, you tell them, hey, hey, you already killed him. Let's go home. Let's keep the peace. Yeah, bury the smoking gun. 
before people like Dan Crenshaw, Ted Cruz, Troy Niels, these are complicit. These are local elected leaders that now, after the fact, quickly reversed and said, hey, stop the violence. But you call for it. You did not trust the vote. After 42 lawsuits has been thrown out, 42. Al Gore had more of a reason to do it. He had a closer vote. He did not. And for them to say, well, in 2016, the, the Democrats did this, this is not a political issue. May stop making it. Stop believing the Kool-Aid. Stop following what Trump says. This is not a political issue. This is whether you believe in law and order, whether you respect the Constitution, whether you want to be American. That's all. These people, Cruz, Triennials, Trump, Jr., they don't, they're not American. This is not American. They need to go. And, and as a, no matter what your affiliation is, Jim, would you say this? And I'm, I'm not saying you have to. As a patriot, as a true American, mm -hmm. how do we hold these folks responsible and accountable for this? Because somebody needs to needs to call this out. There's blood on their hands. Lives were lost. How do we do this? How do we let Mitch McConnell and, and the, the Republican leaders see that this is not this is not acceptable? We can well, accept this. I, I think, like I've said to you on many occasions before, Jim, I think you have to break it down into pieces. I think Trump's behavior and inciting the group yesterday, the group's behavior uh, is absolutely all wrong. And no one expect we expected a big march. No one expected Trump's inciting of inappropriate behavior and that inappropriate behavior itself. That is very different then let's take Ted Cruz and Mitch McConnell, since you mentioned them both by name. Mitch McConnell has said, do not contest the election. Inaugurate Joe Biden. Mitch McConnell has said that from the beginning. Biden won. I, have call, I Mitch McConnell, have called to in, uh, congratulate him, and I will work the Senate to make sure that that happens. And, I, and he was true to form last night, all the way he managed the Senate hearings. Ted Cruz is a little bit different. Ted Cruz proposed having a challenge, which he believed was constitutionally provided to have that challenge. He's one of the brightest, most able, most experienced litigators in front of the Supreme Court there is. His colleague, Josh Hawley from Missouri, called for the same thing. They had nothing to do, nothing to do with the rioters outside. Um, and they stuck to their guns, held their principles, even in the face of all of that, because what they were arguing was a constitutional question. And they, too, were deeply, deeply offended. And I would say, it to whatever my power is, which is almost nothing, I would say they had merit to their argument and they should be held uh, they should be allowed to make that argument. Now, their argument didn't prevail. They didn't expect it to. They knew going in, they were 99 less 13, 86 to 13, and the vote came out something like 93 to 6, okay, at the end. So seven, seven of their colleagues in the Senate changed course, which is a measurement. To me, that is one measurement of the betrayal that Donald Trump's supporters felt. They felt going in, they had their feet solid on certain ground that he pulled out from under them during the day. That is, that, and that's only one measurement. There's also the House measurement. There's also a number of other things that are going on. This 25th Amendment discussion and who is on it, et cetera, et cetera, um, are, are other uh, are other measures. Another measure is uh, every one, 100% of the uh, still living former secretaries of defense issued a warning yesterday before the misbehavior saying that if Donald Trump invokes the military to protect his position, that would be uh, totally unconstitutional and the military should not obey their orders. OK, so some people had had the foresight to see this coming and and warned um, about it. So. Um, so, yeah. I mean, I, I, I guess I guess that's I could 
I, I should feel good about it, but I cannot. Some mm-hmm. people were thought, I, I wish more people saw it coming. I wish we condemned them early on and often. This mm-hmm. is not unpredicted. We, this is Trump. I mean, what is there to say? 13 more days left. Um, him and my Vice President Pence have officially broken off. And I, I respect Mike Pence, even though I disagree with policies. I disagree with the fact that he's complicit for this long, mm-hmm. but now he's finally able to step out of this ideology, this mm-hmm. ideology that Trump has created, that a lot of us have been tied to, mm-hmm. used and abused. Hence, hopefully we could, our country could recover. Hopefully mm-hmm. we could rebuild. Uh, this is not about Biden or Harris. Mm-hmm. This is not about just the issues that came before Trump. The excuses, the justifications we always gave was, well, you know, there's the Bible Belt, the Rust Belt, there are people that are left behind, a trade of some. What, yes, those problems do persist. The, the divide between the right and left is further and further. It's been like that for 40 years since Reagan. But the fact is, the problems that Trump brought in, because he did not solve any of the things he claimed he would. And the way he did it, this is, this, is, this is not democracy. This is not law and order. I keep repeating that. Trump has, Trump needs to be in jail. I've been saying that for a long time. His, the, way, the way he won four years ago was to put Hillary in jail, but there was no, no proof, nothing. Look at this now. And the farce, the hypocrisy of his public announcements of beyond and protesters, uh, dragging Antifa into everything. Look at what he said before in Portland about Portland, but now he is doing the reverse. There's no credibility with this man. There's no credibility with oh, any of Yeah. No, no, not only that, but back to my point about him undercutting his very supporters. He, in, the, in 2016, when he was elected president, he was elected by, because he engineered a takeover of the traditional Republican Party. He did that, and after he was elected, he became a very power figure, and many, many Republicans, while they may not have agreed with him, they were afraid to cross him. So he ruled by by power. You began to see that breaking away before this election when it appeared like he would not win. A few began, the the power structure began to crumble. And after he lost, a big chunk of that went away. For instance, here in Texas, we have two senators. Ted Cruz continued to support the challenge effort. John Cornyn wanted nothing to do with that and was very vocal about that. He and Ted Cruz are close colleagues and friends. But on this, they absolutely, totally disagreed. Many people in the Senate were that same way, including Mitch McConnell otherwise conservative Republican. So um, what Donald Trump has done is he engineered a takeover of the Republican Party. And for a while, he did build it. It was stronger. Uh, it actually did reasonably well in these um, recent elections. But, but Jim, look at the way he built it. That's the problem. But, Using hate and but, divide and lies and conspiracy. Yeah, he made him stronger, but in return, he actually went into the Republican Party and dissolved it from inside. Now I'm afraid we don't want one party to rule. We don't want the Democrat Party. We need balance. The Democrat Party is going to have the House, the Senate, the White House. Since Trump and Pence took office in 2017, mm-hmm. Republicans lost the House in 2018. He loses the presidency in 2020. And in 2021, right now, they lose the Senate. And now they've lost the trust and the faith of the entire world and our own people. So you're tell making, me, how strong did he make the Republican Party? You're, you're, it's not strong. He used falsehood. He tricked okay. and abused. I'm sorry. You're making you're, you're making my point that he's decimated the Republican Party as badly as George Bush decimated the Republican Party in 2008. George Bush ran the economy into a power dive into the ground, and when uh, the economy crashed and burned in 07 and 08. <laughs> He had his Treasury Secretary um, behave inappropriately with the TARP and all of the other things, and nobody went to jail. 
nobody went to jail. Okay. Good so, point. but great point. They should have. They, they should have been yeah. talking. Agreed. In, much agreed. Many, in many, many, many ways. And many, many financial institutions that were too big to fail, they were actually rewarded yeah. for, for their failure. That's it, right. And bitter. I continue many years later, 12, 13, 14 years later, I am still very bitter about all of that. It should not happen in a country like ours, in a capitalist economy. No. We, we cannot allow that and we let them get away with it. And, I, and, and being from finance, and I, I agree with you completely, they took public money, they played mm -hmm. with the confidence. It's, it's a scam and, and mm -hmm. they allowed it to happen. And like I said, Bush Jr. is complicit. I, I, I have nothing good to say about him, but at least when it comes to stand, stand, standing up to Trump, of course, he's not running for election or trying to win any primaries, but this is why the Republican elected officials are afraid of him. Like you said, you explained to our audience very clearly mm -hmm. why they support him, because he ruled with iron fist. If he'll put you down, you will lose power, be out of office. They had a choice. But now Trump is out of office. He is done. And yet, why are there still Republican leaders still kowtowing him, bound down to this nonsense? Mm -hmm. Well, I, I'm not sure that they are. But if they are, the numbers are very, very small, very, very small. And their position is very, very weak. 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 Very, very weak. weak. Especially uh, after the fiasco from yesterday. Uh, yeah. Finally, it, it's really, it really worked against, you know, it, it proved, it proved what, what a lot of the, 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 the progressive, uh, the Democratic Party has been saying. The criticism of him and his support, it, it's proved it all. And we, I just regret, why can't we realize this earlier to prevent this? I guess that's this is the only way. This is the only way. This is what it takes for us to finally give up the little tiny ounce of empathy, tiny ounce of hope yeah. that will come around. There's, there's, a, there's a, you know, some people say history repeats itself. I, I clearly remember what happened in Watergate. I well, you and I've talked about it with Gerald Ford. I clearly remember all the events that led up to Nixon's resignation. I clearly remember Ford's pardon. I clearly remember Nixon leaving in disgrace, all of that. And I clearly remember the rebuilding in the late 70s. Okay? There's a big difference now between Nixon and Trump. Ford pardoned Nixon and he pardoned him prospectively for all crimes which he may have committed that he had not been charged with. The difference now is, I don't believe anyone will pardon Mr. Trump. Okay? Wow, well, from what we spoke with last time, last week when we talked about this, because you wanted, you believe that, no, you, you mentioned, and I agree with you, that for the sake of the country, for the future, that Biden or the next presidency should follow Gerald Ford's lead and pardon Trump in order for the nation to heal. You said that, and I agree with you, even though I don't want that. But Perhaps. now you're saying that, that he would not or he should not. No, I'm saying I'm actually saying both. Thank you. Great. Yeah. Well, Jim, that's, wow. Well, two, two things. Num wow. Number, num number one, I don't believe there's anyone, including most especially Joe Biden, he would have to be the one to pardon Trump. And I, I, I think he is polar opposite from doing that. I don't think he has any intent of doing that. Should he, though? Should he? Hmm? And after what happened yesterday, no, should two, he? Two, two, and that's, that's now I'm going to tell you what Jim thinks. Two is, I think it would be inappropriate for him to do so. Wow. Um, because Mr. Trump has done so many things within the last very short amount of time. Uh, 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 what do you call it? Malintent. It, 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 it's, it's like, um, uh, uh, it, it's like uh, first degree murder. You murdered someone not in the heat of passion, you murdered them with an intent to do it. That's a difference between, Mr. Trump has done things within the last week that decimated and hurt a great number of people. I think the future that Donald Trump looks forward to um, is a huge amount of political controversy, continued disgrace, but it's gonna hit him where it's most valuable to him in uh, legal 
uh, legal battles over all kinds of things and including major, major judgments that are going to cost him his fortune. Donald Trump takes pride in having built his fortune. My own observation is his fortune is what he inherited from his father. If you go back and you look at what his father willed him and the way he took it away from his other siblings, and, and you and I have not talked about how I had dealt with Mr. Trump back in, in New York, um, back in the late 80s and early 90s. That's a whole nother story. Well, um, how can we never, how did we never get to that, Jim? That's a great personal story that nobody else experienced. Yeah. Yeah, well, we, 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 we can do that sometime. But I, I, know, I know more than a lot of other people do. But when you look at what he has done over the course of the intervening years, it's not clear to me that he took his father's fortune, which in today's world would be about $3 billion. And he built it beyond $3 billion. There's a lot of doubt whether the fortune that he enjoys now is even worth $3 billion. It may be worth quite a lot less than that, okay? Um, so uh, there's so much we don't know. I, I'd, I'd be reluctant to venture into any kind of that kind of arithmetic, but what I can say is not only will he be the subject of many, many, many lawsuits of many, many different kinds, but it's not just federal lawsuits. He's going to have state lawsuits in New York. Um, the district attorney, uh, Cyrus Vance, is already after Trump and, and Trump's family. So, um, uh, Trump I hope gets, that's the case. Uh, Barbie? I hope the Southern District of New York will be able to continue uh -huh. to do, they're, they're the most independent um, judicial. Uh, branch, I mean, judicial unit that we have, and they've been doing doing this for a long time. So I hope they're held accountable. And I want to I want to reinforce what you just said. Uh, I've been doing TV for many years, but if mm -hmm. you go back to YouTube and look at my channel, I've been saying the exact same things you have said about Trump for five years, from the year he decided to run mm -hmm. till, on till now. He's a mm -hmm. scam artist. He's a fraud. He inherited the money. And on Wall Street, no legitimate investment bank or blue blood firms would work with him. That's he nice. takes money, invests it. When he fails, the stockholders pay for it, shareholders pay for it. But mm -hmm. if he does well, gambling, the, he keeps the profits. Or the lenders. Or well, the the lenders. lenders, yes, lenders and vendors, the investors. He's declared bankruptcy. He, he has used every which way to, to cheat and scam out of people. He is a bully. He's the mm -hmm. worst example of as a Christian, as a human being. Of course, he's not a Christian. We know that. I'll say it on Bible. But what I'm angry and what I'm sad and disappointed about is all the excuses and justifications that me, you, and everybody else have given him over and over and over again. We knew all this coming in. We knew mm -hmm. all the lawsuit against him with porn stars. We know the lies he does. We know he pressured Ukraine. I mean, there's just so many things. Why is it that it only takes someone to die or four people to die to lose their life for an all-out assault on the Capitol for us to say, oh, gosh, I wish this and that are new earlier? We knew all along. Mm -hmm. And yet we found excuses. We, we are all complicit in this, Jim. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I, I don't know. Well, what's let's, 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 let's go on now and let's make sure that the FBI – and all the law enforcement agencies actually do use all the tools at hand in order to um, arrest and prosecute those who created the mischief tomorrow. Jim, I, mean, the US, I, I, I hope, you know, I, I really applaud you. I love hearing this from you, that you're not holding on to the ideology or finding ways to absolve him just to show that you were not right the last four years. But I hate to also tell you this, from the latest polls from today, from multiple news outlets, mm -hmm. 60, over 60% 60 of Americans believe that Trump and his supporters are wrong and complicit with this. But there's still one third of Americans that says that this is not Trump's fault, that this is legitimate and that it, it makes sense to challenge. That's their right and freedom to do this. Could you imagine that? Oh, but I mean, do, do I believe that there was uh, election misbehavior? I absolutely do. 
Uh, absolutely do. And I think that for all of our sakes going forward, having nothing to do with Trump, we need to clean up the entire election process. Just like I think we need to totally clean up our public health management. I think it has been absolutely abysmal how we have handled the statistic testing for the pandemic, statistical analysis, vac vaccination distribution, hospitalization and treatment of people, allocation of medical and other resources. It has been abysmal, abysmal. And regardless of how Donald Trump created the vaccine through warp speed or whether you believe that or not, we owe it to ourselves to clean this stuff up. And back to your point about President Bush, he said early in his administration, way back in 2002 or three, shortly after the 9-11 attack, we will have a pandemic and we will need to be prepared. The federal government and the bureaucracy forgot about it, just neglected that responsibility. And we're all paying the price. And the biggest consequence of that, and we've talked about it before, is uncertainty. And we have so harmed our economy by trying to deal with the pandemic. We haven't been able to figure out the proper balance all the way along, and people have been hurt badly by the reaction to the pandemic. We need as a society and as an economy and as a government to clean up this management. It's just Absolutely. That is the financial collapse. Absolutely, and, Jim. That is and, insightful. And Trump has to take his share. He takes glory. There's no question about it. But he has to take his share of the hit. He appointed a bunch of these people, the head of the NIH, the head of he the CDC, the head of, of uh, 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 the Drug Administration. Uh, Jim, yeah. you're talking about a classic narcissistic sociopath. A sociopath would never take responsibility. We knew that long ago. So, yeah. But I applaud you for saying that because we got to start working together. And the fact you bring up the pandemic, loss and all this mess, we had the highest death toll yesterday and the highest amount of people that has contracted on coronavirus. And this is a year, nine months after. Yesterday was all-time high. Houston, we're in trouble. LA has ordered a shutdown. Yep, Hospitals LA. cannot take it. You do not resuscitate. I, LA, I just LA. found out two more people I know closely that, that died. This, this loss, we, and then the economy, Trump and, and conservative and Republicans here, oh, we got to keep the economy open. You're absolutely right. We didn't fix it in the beginning because of Trump. So now it's too late to even talk about economy because the reaction, like you said, is it, where he lost the chance to control it. Once again, you cannot say that this is because of the pandemic, because there are a lot of other countries that did follow the right advice, follow signs, and is under control. Even China is a perfect example. I hate to say this. Look at China. They controlled it. Look at the death numbers. They're done. Look at the New Year's celebration. That's what pains me. When I see Beijing, when I see Wuhan, when I see Abu Dhabi, when I see Taipei, people gathering crowds without mass celebrating. And look at us. This is on Trump. And I, I'm, I'm, I'm worked up, but I, everything you said just now is what we need to do. There is hope. 13 more years. We're going to cross the aisle. Left, there's no more left and right. We got to rebuild the, the trust that the United States have in the world. We need to rebuild our economy. We need to put, put in policies and change laws to ensure this will not happen again. And we, we will not let a extremist ideologist like Trump win office. We have to figure out how and, mm -hmm. and do not let history repeat itself because people don't realize that, yes, it, it, you might think we made a lot of money in the stock market. Okay, the certain, certain, certain segment of society. But in the long term, this hurts all of us, no matter how much profits we took. Because in the end, the distrust, the, the racial divide, the hate toward, and, and the way he does it, the way he says it, the, the bullying, it, it will affect all of us, our kids. Well, and, uh, yeah, we probably got to leave it there, um, Jimmy, for tonight. You've got a lot of translation to do from what we've talked about today so that you can... <laughs> you can uh, convert our comments into what our audience can readily understand. So, and I know you have a deadline. So uh, thank you. Jim.
Yeah, thank you. We can pick it up. The, the two subjects are the Trump exit and the uh, and the Trump's pandemic. Those, those are those are not going to go away. We can pick those up next week. You take care of yourself. Good seeing you. Yeah, thank you. By the way, mm -hmm. um, I've tested negative three times in the last two weeks. Congrats. So, yeah, yeah. Uh, my wife and I got the most recent test on Monday, and we got the results today. So negative again. Congratulations, congratulations. 各位观众，谢谢你们的收看。我们再次祝祝福大家新年快乐。我们也恭祝健他这个测验，他这个这个病毒，他病新冠病毒，他三周是都是阴性的，没有问题。那我们下个月会持续啊。I owe it all to clean living. To clean living. Perfect. Thank you, Jim. 谢谢各位观众，新年快乐。